Back in 1832, the very last great bustard was shot in the UK, but now there's a move to bring back this long lost beast. Back in 2016, Springwatch went to Wiltshire to meet David Waters, who has been the driving force behind this project. I think I've always had a really strong interest in wildlife and as soon as I was old enough to walk I had a pair of binoculars around the neck. My parents bought me a subscription to, I think it was a monthly magazine, The World of Wildlife. And I used to look at all the exotic or big, exciting wildlife and it always seemed to be hundreds of miles away. And then I learned of the Great Bustard. Great bustards have a natural sort of aristocratic elegance about them. The bill is often just slightly elevated, and you can imagine them as sort of Spanish grandees as they as they strut about. They really do look a, a classy bird. When I learned the great bustards used to live not only in England, but in Wiltshire, where I lived, and it had been persecuted to extinction. Yeah, I'm quite miffed about that and very disappointed. There was a place in Russia called Saratov where great bustard nests are actually destroyed by their methods of agriculture. I formed the great bustard group, and the idea was we could just go and rescue some of those eggs, rear the birds, and release them. Now we're actually able to go and source our birds from Spain and then bring them back and do all the rearing here in Wiltshire. When a great busted chick hatches, they're like little sort of Tyrannosaurus, dinosaur type things. Getting out of that egg takes up to 24 hours, exhausting work for them. They can't feed themselves for the first five to ten days, and they actually rely on mum to bill-feed them. I can't pretend I make myself look like a female bustard, but I can at least disguise my features so the bustard doesn't realise I'm a human. Currently, we've got somewhere, plus or minus a couple, 40 adult or, or sub-adult great bustards. Early in the spring, or tail end of the winter, the males get together and they lek. They, they do this very, very elaborate display. And they're really sorting out who's who, who's going to be the dominant male. The full display of an adult male great bustard is... Yeah, it, it's very, very spectacular. But it's also bizarre. They've got this ability to turn their wings and tail almost sort of inside out. It's got this inflatable pouch, a gular pouch, that runs down the front of the throat, and it inflates it right up. All the underfeathers are on display and they're, they're white, very, very bright white. And it's just this big white sort of powder puff that doesn't look like a bird at all. There's this white blaze just appears on the hillside. When the males are displaying, it's, it's, it seems to be about size and whiteness. The great bustard see in ultraviolet, and we know the, the feathers of the great bustard are highly reflective for ultraviolet. So what's bright to us is probably sort of psychedelic to them.
The females will choose the big, heavy males with the best, brightest plumage. And those successful males probably account for a lot of the matings. Nothing happens terribly quickly with great bustards. Males are thought to need to be five years old before they breed. I'm hoping that within the next three to five years, we'll be able to say the UK great bustard population is self-sustaining. That's always been the aim of the project, but the last couple of years have really taken us close to that point. To have created a new great bustard population would be a fantastic achievement, I think.